السلام عليكم كيف حالكم انا بخير وانتم ويلكم تو ليرن اربيك اونلاين ويد لبنى دومايان اي ويل اسك يو تو تيرن يور جيزز ستيدلي تو فورم وان هالو فيرب وانس اجين تو اوبزرف اتس بيهافيور ديورينغ اتس كونجوجيشن ان ذا بريزنت تنس ويتش از انالوجوس to the one in the past tense. The greatest part of learning is when the principles start repeating themselves. Repetition is the mother of learning and the father of action, which makes the architect of accomplishments. Don't you know that? Repetition creates the master, you. So, better not get bored. Mm -mm. Let's simulate our knowledge. Whenever the suffix of the conjugations begin with a consonant, the middle radical is shortened, which means the alif of the hollow verb dissolves, disappears, drops out. Whenever the suffix begins with a vowel, the middle radical will be converted to its original long vowel, which is nesting in its root. Now, we will cut the cart into three units. Verbs with the well as a middle radical. Verbs with the ya yeah as a middle radical. And the unsettling verbs with either a well or a yeah as a middle radical, but whose present conjugations do not reflect the identity of the middle radical. The reason why you need to hire a detective to help you with this mission impossible. Let's expose the verb ذَاقَ which means to taste or to try, as the representative of the class of verbs with the well as the heart of its roots. Anna, ah. So the prefixes are all the same for all the conjugations. Anna, ah, zuku, ending with. A vowel. Where does the suffix start? Right after the third radical. So, ذَاقَ يَذُوقُ ذوق is the verbal noun. So the root is ذَل وَاو قَف. So right after the third radical starts. The suffix, which is here, the short vowel, damma, which means we will keep the well, yay, the well will stay, we'll party. And the same thing, we have a damma, the well stays, everybody is peaceful. And the after the qaf, the kasra comes which is a short vowel. So the well stays. Huwa yadhuqu, same thing, hiya tadhuqu. Nahnu nadhuqu, again, we have damma. Antuma tadhuqani, for feminine and masculine, second person, dual. Huma yadhuqani, again, the suffix starts with a fatha. هما يذوقان with the فتحة أنتم تذوقون we have the ضمة the start of the suffix so the well stays أنتن تذوقنا check the the last radical what do we have we have a سكون a zero nothing all right so the well will be gone 
So we have to try to reconcile the, the short vowel and the well, that the well can stay. So the well is gone. Tadukna. Hum yadukuna. Again, we have a dhamma on top of the last radical qaf. And hunna yadukna. Again, the well is gone because the suffix starts with the consonants. Since we don't, we ignore the sukun. Since the sukun is like nothing. So the suffix is the consonant noon. So we can clearly see that the middle radical shows up in most of the conjugations for this verb. Because whenever the suffix begins with a vowel, mostly here the short vowel is u, because U, the Dhamma matches the well, and which is the middle radical of its root. So, whenever the suffix begins with a vowel, the well will be reflected in the conjugation as a long vowel, except for the second and third person feminine plural, Antunna. Second person and hunna, third person, where the suffix begins with a consonant, the noon, the consonant noon. Thus, the well will be replaced by a tamma as a good match. So, as I have said, any suffix for either the past or present tense that begins with a consonant, and I keep repeating it, always places a sukun immediately before it. All right? Like here. So this is another string to tie around your finger remember, all right? Consequently, the theoretical conjugation for ذَاقَ, for the third person uh, feminine plural, would be يَذُكْنَ if we decide to keep the well. Note the sukun following the well, all right? Which normally is not written on top of, of long vowels because we are already supposed to know about it. And remember that in Arabic, any long vowel is always followed by a sukun, an invisible one, which means that we have a double sukun, double zero, here and here, one after another, diffusing a kind of inaction, which is forbidden in this language. The reason why the still wow ceases, all right? And the Dhamma takes over by being placed on top of the first radical, all right? This shortening takes place only for Hunna and and tunna, only these ones, only the group females. Now, let's bring to light the verb zada, zada to add, to increase. Who has a ya as its middle radical? The ya is reflected 
In the imperfect conjugations for this type of verb, just as the well is reflected in the conjugations for ذاق. So here we have زاد زاد يزيد and the verbal noun is زيادة زيادة so let's pull the roots from this verbal noun we have زي we have يا ألف is never part of any roots we have دال and تا مربوطة also is excluded so we have زي يا and دال so أنا أ again same prefix أزيدو so it ends with a short vowel like here but since the middle radical of the root is يا we will have a كسرة before the يا أزيدو تزيدو تزيدين يزيدو تزيدو نزيدو same thing just we have كسرة and يا because كسرة is matching the يا and ضمة is matching the well تزيدان يزيدان تزيدان تزيدون تزيدنا and you know why why we said تزيدنا ت زيد so if we keep the يا with سكون and we have the del with sukun because the suffix starts with the consonant nun. So, since two sukuns are not allowed, so we get rid of this long vowel with, with the its sukun and we replace it with the kasra sign that we show together with the first radical. Because kasra matches the ya to have tazidna. Alright? Yaziduna and yazidna. It's the same thing. So, as you can see, the principle of shortening the long vowel uh, to its short counterpart, damma or kasra, applies the same way for verbs with a well as well as a ya as the middle radical. By now, you should feel a little bit less concerned about conjugating hollow verbs. You have to. As a matter of principle, learn, understand, and load yourself with grammar rules. I have to point out that Form 1 verbs are the most difficult with respect to conjugations and forming their verbal nouns. Which means that Arabic does not get harder than it is right now. Alright, so relax. Form 2 through 10 have patterns which are entirely uniform with each form and are very easy to learn. So focus on this step since it is the foundation of the following ones. The third kind of verbs form one hollow verb which can have either a well or a yeah as a middle radical in the per, um, in the in form one uh, hello verb is illustrated by two verbs one of them khafa and the other nama khafa to fear to be afraid nama to sleep so In the imperfect, the alif remains in the conjugations, while for the second and third person feminine plural, the alif is shortened to 
fatha doesn't matter if the root the middle uh, radical of the root is well or yeah it will match the alif of form one of this verb so fatha matches the alif it's different so khafa ana a khafu normally the verbal noun of khafa khawf khawf namanu which means the root is kha waw fa nun waw mim but here we have just the alif during the conjugations ana akhafu anta takhafu takhafina yakhafu takhafu nakhafu takhafani yakhafani takhafani takhafuna takhafna because the suffix starts with a consonant so the alif is gone and instead we will have the fatha we will keep the fatha because fatha matches the alif kasra matches the ya dhamma matches the wa so here ignore the middle radical of the root yakhafuna yakhafna so we have just two exceptions hunna and hum and for the verbs we have just khafa and nama but the rest of the verbs mostly they will conjugate like zaqa or zada but what is important is to know about verbal nouns all right you have to learn as many as you can because they are very very helpful well keep calm and conjugate the hollow verbs actually the all of things is an infinite conjugation of the verb to do isn't it i want to offer you four words scale them and send their equivalents back to me all right al irad al azim al injaz al shaja until then you keep memorizing and learning verbal nouns but like me ila liqa